given the complexity, all cosmological scales involved here that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, when you look out at the future of Earth, do you worry about future extinction events? I, I do think that we might be in the middle of an extinction right now, if you define it by the number of species that are getting killed off. And it's subtle, but you know it's a complex system. The way things respond to events is sometimes things evolve. Sometimes animals just move to another place. And the way we've developed the Earth, it's very hard for species just to move somewhere else. And we're seeing that with people now too. I mean, I know people are worried just about AI taking over, and that's a totally different story. We just don't think about the future very much. We think about what we're doing now. And we certainly don't think enough about all the animals that we're destroying, all the things that are precursors to humans that we sort of rely on. It's interesting just to think whether the, the, the things that threaten us is the stuff we see that's happening gradually or the stuff we don't really see that's going to happen all of a sudden. I sometimes like think about what is what should we be more worried about? Because it seems like like with the asteroids or nuclear war, it could be stuff that just happens one day. You know, when I say one day, meaning over a span of a few days or a few months, but on a, you know, not on a scale of decades and centuries. Because we sometimes mostly talk about stuff that's happening gradually, but we can be really surprised. It's actually really interesting, and that was actually one of the reasons it took a while to determine what it was that had caused the last extinction, because people did think at the time, uh, many people thought that things were more gradual. And the idea of extinction was a very was actually a novel concept at some point. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, these aren't predictable events necessarily. They're only predictable on a grand scale. Um, but sometimes, sometimes they are. And, and I think people were pretty aware that nuclear um, weapons were dangerous. I'm not sure people are as aware now as they yeah. were, you know, say 20 or 30 years ago. And that certainly worries me. Um, I have to say I was not as worried about AI as other people, but now I understand. And it's not, I mean, it's more that as soon as you create things that we lose control over, it's scary. And the other thing that we're learning from the events today is that is that it takes a few bad actors. It takes everyone to sort of make things work well. It takes not that many things to make things go wrong. It's, it's the issue with disease. You know, we can find out what causes a disease, but to make things better is not necessarily that simple. Sometimes it is. But for things to be healthy, a lot of things have to work. Mm -hmm. For things to go wrong, only one thing has to go wrong. And so it's amazing that we do it. And the same is true for democracy. For democracy to work, a lot of people have to believe in it. A few bad actors can destroy things sometimes. So a lot of the things that we really rely on are delicate equilibrium situations. Some of, you know, and there is some robustness in the systems. We try to build in robustness, but a few extreme events can sometimes alter things. And um, I think that's what people are scared of today in many ways. They're scared of it for democracy. They're scared of it for peace. They're scared of it for AI. I think they're not as scared as they should be about nuclear weapons, to be honest. Um, I think that's a more serious danger than people realize. Um, I think people are a little bit more scared about pandemics than they were before. Um, but I still say they're not super scared about it. So you're right. There are these major events that can happen, and we are setting things up so that they might happen. And we should be thinking about them. The question is, who should be thinking about them? How should we be thinking about them? How do you make things happen on a global scale? Because that's really what we need. It certainly shouldn't be a source of division. It should be a source of grand collaboration, probably. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. I just wonder what it'd be like a, to be a dinosaur. It must have been beautiful to like look at that asteroid just enter the atmosphere. Until like everything, just, man, would I, that'd be one of the things I would travel back in time to. You know, just that's also it. one of the things that I think you probably could do with virtual reality. I don't think you have to be there and get extinct. So just experience it. <laughs> I think there's something, you know, it's an event you're just watching. You're not doing anything. You're just mm -hmm. looking at it. So maybe you could just recreate it. I actually heard that this, uh, there's a nuclear weapon explosion experience in virtual reality that's good to remind you about, like, what it would feel I like. I have to say, you know, so I got it. 
I got an award from the Museum of Nuclear History and Technology in the Southwest. And I went to visit the museum, which turned out to be mostly a museum of nuclear weapons. And the scary thing is that they look really cool. You know, yeah. it's true that you have that, yes, this is scary, but you also have this, yeah. this is cool feeling. And I think we have to get around that because you know, I'm, I kind of think that, yes, you can be in that, but I'm not sure that's going to make people scared. Has it, have they actually asked afterwards? Are you more or less scared? Yeah. That's a good, uh, it's, it's a really good point. I mean, that's a good summary of just humanity in general. We're attracted to creating cool stuff, even though it can be dangerous. And actually, that was the really interesting thing about visiting that museum, actually. I, it was very nice because I had a tour from people who had been working there in the Cold War and actually one or two people from the Manhattan Project. It was a very cool tour. And you just realize just how just the thing itself gets you so excited. I think that's something that sometimes these movies miss. Just the thing itself, you're not thinking about the the overall consequences. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, in some ways, it was like the early Silicon Valley. You know, people were just thinking like, what if we did this? What if we did that? And, you know, not keeping track of like what the peripheral consequences are. And you definitely see that happening with AI now. I mean, I think that was the moral of the battle that just happened, that, you know, it's just full speed ahead which gives me a really great transition to an, another quote in your book. So you, you write about it, the experience of facing the sublime in, in physics, and you quote uh, Ryan Rilke, quote, for beauty is nothing but the beginning of terror, which we are still just able to endure, and we're so awed because it serenely disdains to annihilate us. It's pretty intense. It, I think, applies to nuclear weapons. But it also, I mean, at a more mundane, perhaps, level, I think it applies, you know, it's really interesting. One of the things I found when I wrote these books is, you know, some people love certainty. You know, scientists kind of, many revel in uncertainty. It's not that you want to be uncertain, you want to solve it. But you're at this edge where it's really frustrating because you don't really want to not know the answer, but... Of course, if you knew the answer, that would be, it would be done. So you're always at this edge where there's, you're trying to sort things out. And there is something scary. You don't know what is, you don't know if there's going to be a solution. You don't know if you're going to find it. So it's not something that can destroy the earth. It's just something that you do on your individual level. But then, of course, there are much bigger things like the ones you're talking about where they could actually be dangerous. The stuff I do, I just want to be clear, I'm doing theoretical physics, not very dangerous. Um, but sometimes things end up having bigger consequences than you think. Yeah, but dangerous in a very pragmatic sense, but isn't it still in part terrifying when you think of a, just the size of things, like so, the size of dark matter, like the, 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 the power of this thing in terms of uh, its, its potential gravitational effects, just this, this co cosmological objects of a black hole at the center of our galaxy, so this might be where why I'm a physicist or why I differ from other people. Yeah. Because I'm not such a big fan of humanity in some ways. <laughs> some ways I am. But the idea that we were everything would be really boring to me. I love the idea that there's so much more out there, that there's a bigger universe and there's lots to discover and that we're not all there is. Wouldn't it be disappointing if we were all there is? Yeah, and, and uh, the full diversity of other stuff is pretty interesting. You know, we have no idea how much there is. You know, we we know what we what we can observe so far. So the idea that there's other stuff out there that we yet have to figure out, it's exciting. Mm 